Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Jaquetta Williams with another segment of What Has COVID Taught You? The person I'm bringing in today is a makeup guru. And when I say guru, that's exactly what I mean. He has done the faces of some of the most beautiful women in the world to include the Braxtons, the women of Mad Married to Medicine, the women on Sister Circle. Say hello to my friend, Kelvin Myers. Hey friend. Hey friend. <laughs> so let's talk about the question at hand. What has COVID taught you? Oh my goodness. That's such a loaded <laughs> question. I guess if you're anything like the type of person I am, I'm always looking to find out what is this experience bringing to me? What am I supposed to be learning from this situation? COVID taught me to really just trust the process, to trust God and know that I'm going to be taken care of no matter what. And this is just my opinion and, and what I observe. Um, how fear guides and in, in leads society. Um, it, it, it is huge on how, you know, how we can be controlled and manipulated. Another thing that I learned during COVID is, is a rebirthing. You know, I, I'm a country boy. I, I'm from Sumter, South Carolina, grew up on a farm. And it made me start thinking about, OK, growing my own food, gardens. And, and I, I started eating much better. I, my vegan eating it also taught me that my my brother's problems are my problems. I think that it's a realization that we really are here to serve one another. One of my dear friends came to live with me. He was only supposed to be here for 30 days um, in transition of moving. And during the 30 days that he was here, he got a cancer diagnosis. Um, I, so everything happens in divine order. You know, he was supposed to be here. I was supposed to be available uh, to do that and, and not have a job or have a gig that I was working 10 and 12 hours a day so I could be there to help him. COVID taught me that I'm slightly an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy being at home alone quite a bit. It taught me that I needed a break. I've been a makeup artist and I have been hustling and grinding for 20 years as a makeup artist. Before makeup artists used to be an engineer, but when I started as a makeup artist it, here in the city, you know, the work wasn't as plentiful as it is or as it was prior to COVID in the past 10 years. It was a lot of scraping and scratching and crawling. So I learned that I was tired and that I needed rest and that ripping and running and being busy all the time. Working like a crazy person does not make you a better person, doesn't get you closer to heaven, doesn't get you doesn't get you all the things that you thought you wanted. But we also know how busy your industry can be, has been, but it was put on like all shows, everything. So were you concerned about, okay, this is how I make my livelihood and I can't do any of that now? Oh, absolutely. I was floored. First of all, the show that I've been working on, Sister Circle, for the past three years, Monday through Friday, um, 255 shows a, a year. Um, of three weeks to a month after they sent us home, they sent us home March 10th, 2020. By April, the first week of April, they had decided that they were going to cancel the show. I was fearful just a little bit. Well, I, I came back to myself and I said, you know what? It is what it is. I'm not really sure what this all means. I didn't think that it would last this long at all. Um, so I tried to stay calm about it. And for the first time, I felt guilty because the first time in 20 years, what has sustained my life and what and one of the best decisions I ever made, which is to become a makeup artist, I wasn't motivated. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to do makeup. We talking about these superficial things right now when the world is in such in such a, a place. <laughs> um, makeup has served me just as much as I've served it. And how can I be feeling this way about something that has sustained my life and has, you know, really um, changed me to really tap into my spiritual self, knowing that God is and will always take care of me. I was taking care of two people off of, you know, my savings. And so, you know, I knew that that would eventually dwindle down or whatever. So I just started tapping into what I know to be true. And that is God has always provided a way. What I've basically decided, and I know this is, uh, 
I'm releasing this right now for the first time. <laughs> I've kind of decided that I just want to work more so on projects. Um, having a lot of personal clients, a lot of celebrity clients where I'm at their house at two and three o'clock in the morning sometimes, five or six o'clock in the morning sometimes. I'm a part of their the personal things that are going on inside their home or personal things that are going on inside their heads. I've decided that I don't really want to do that anymore. I no longer want to, and I know this sounds so weird to probably so many people, but I no longer really want to have those relationships with uh, clients that call on you every day or whenever they choose to, and that their schedule becomes mm -hmm. your schedule, their life becomes your life. Mm -hmm. I think I've I paid the dues. I've done that, been there and done that. And if you have the constitution to still be able to do it, it is an amazing thing. It has allowed me to go many places, travel the world, see so many different things, um, meet so many different people. And I'm very grateful. But I'll be 48 on the 28th of this month. And I just have decided that that's not really what I want to do anymore with my makeup talent or career. I have to tell you, I'm speaking about it with a smile right now, but when it was going on in my head, it was lots of inner conflict because mm -hmm. I just was like, Kelvin, you tripping. What are you doing? What do you want to keep with you from the lessons that you've learned to move forward? Honestly, Jaquetta, all of them. Staying in the moment is a big one. I'm happy because I'm so grateful just to be in this moment, no matter whatever else happens not sweating the small stuff. I had some health issues. So, you know, Jaquetta, you know this. Um, six years ago, I had a cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. and went through chemo and radiation. So this past year, I was having a little irritation at the base of my back, like um, near my tailbone. I guess I wasn't paying it a whole lot of attention. But while I was here supporting and helping to take care of my friend who was going through chemo and radiation, something just said, you need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor. So long story short, I had <laughs> another diagnosis of cancer, a second diagnosis of cancer. So are you saying to me that you've been diagnosed with cancer and are dealing with that and you had a friend who you're also helping through with the journey? Well, yes. And now he was here from January to end of January last year until the end of November. I probably got my diagnosis October. I've been here um, pushing through. I'm finished with the cycles of chemo and radiation. Hopefully I don't have to have any more. And, you know, of course, I'm doing some natural things to get rid of it because we, we both know that we know people where the chemo and radiation doesn't always do the trick. So I'm attacking it from several different size and uh mm -hmm. and really just trying my best to stay positive yeah that's that's always so hard to hear particularly if you've already done it one time before you don't want to do it again that that that's that ain't no easy road right there it's just it's just not absolutely it's not i, I Mm -hmm. We'll never try to downplay it because, you know, you go through your emotions of how do I get, how did I get here again? What caused mm -hmm. it? But here, here's what I can tell you. My job has really been to see the positive. I can't focus on what did I do? What happened? Mm -hmm. Why is it here? It's here or it was here. And so now what am I going to do? During the quarantine, I um, started some counseling. I was going to therapy. Yeah. And as much as I thought that I had forgiven, gotten settled with some things that have happened in my life and as a child and all that, apparently I was still holding on to some of those things. So that prompted me to have real conversations with my family, individually with my mom, with my dad. Um, then we had a, a, you know, a whole family meeting. I have to tell you that Sometimes being the black sheep of the family can also be a blessing. It, it, it allows you to know that you are the person that can help break generational curses. For certain relationships who I felt like I could really do without, they have changed for the better. It, I had to take me out of it and understand that it's not just about, about me. Even when the worst things happen, there are some of, some of the best things come out of those worst things. This actually... This situation was necessary for you to move to your next place in life. When I'm speaking to people about things, spirituality, health, wellness, beauty, 
healing, I'll be able to come from a point of view of this is what I know because I experienced it. This is what I did. These are the things that helped me. These are the things that got me through. It may not work for everyone, but it may work for you if you try it. A thing that I did not do, uh, and I'll share this with you in this interview as well, you know, like the first time um, when I got through it, I did promise God, I was like, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell my testimony. And, and I did share with people one-on-one -on -one here and there that I thought it could help, but I never really just made it public. So this time is definitely something that I have to do. I do want to go back to one thing. The people that hear this, I, I want them to, to get it as well. Not that I didn't know before COVID, but the thing that I think COVID taught all of us is that our country and our society is not what we thought it was. It is much more fragile. It is much more fragile. It's much more evil than we would like for it to be. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to think of a better word, but, but it is what it is. Word. I'm corrupt, yes. corrupt. Yes. And what I want us to understand Monster is this. all of those things, you know, mm -hmm. um, as people of color here in the United States of America, uh, we've been fighting for equal rights for a very long time and we need to stop doing that. Uh, we need to stop begging people to make us feel equal to them. They're never gonna do that. They're never gonna do that, okay? And I'm not saying every one of them, but again, it's the majority. The perfect analogy of that is when Muhammad Ali said, if I'm in a cage and it's a bunch of snakes coming, and not all of those snakes are poisonous, but I don't know which ones are. So am I gonna let all of them in because one or two of them are not poisonous? or I'm gonna keep them all out. Why are we always trying to prove something to them? We don't have anything to prove. We need to prove it to ourselves that we can be the best of who we are. We're not what they have defined us to be. Think critically. You can't believe everything that you hear in media on the news. Ask questions, cross check. Just be very aware of who you are. Learn your history, learn your history before slavery. We were a people before slavery. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that we have contributed to society that we would not have these conveniences if it were not for us or people who look mm -hmm. like us. And I think that's mm -hmm. just very important. And if you haven't learned anything else during this quarantine, that you should learn that these things that we've been fighting for, supposed marching for, and I'm not taking away because I've been out there marching as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it starts with us and there are some basic things that we have to stop doing. We have to stop trying to fit in. You have to pave your own way. Yes, you do. <laughs> Kelvin Myers, this was an amazing conversation. Clarity and honesty.